Hey, it's Ryan here, and I'm here with an exciting package uh, from Medieval Shop. And as you can see, he does uh, sell through eBay, not only Medieval Shop Australia online. Uh, so you might find some deals on eBay that you might not find on, on his page. You might want to check that out as well. Uh, but he sent me a nice package here. It feels quite heavy. Uh, I think the theme is shields, is what he was telling me. I don't know exactly what we got, but we'll go ahead and check this out. Let's see if I can start opening this up here. I would like to bring up that uh, not only do I have Patreon right now, and that we are using our new lapel mic. I don't know if anybody can see this little thing on me here, but this should help uh, with the sound, and it is a little bit windy today. And a lot of times the wind in South Texas, even with a fence around the yard, because I shoot most of my videos in my backyard, because it's the most convenient and easy way for me to do it, uh, interferes with our video. You can't hear me very well. A lot of people complain that the sound changes abruptly, up and down, it's too high. I try to adjust it, but this should help a lot. I mean, uh, seriously. So let us know if you like the new sound equipment, the lapel mics we've been wanting to get for a while. I'm also using a shotgun mic. We repaired our main camera, which is the one I'm looking at you all at now. And the wind's gushing in, so hopefully that's helping. We shall see. It actually moved the camera. I'm watching the camera move. That's some powerful wind. Uh, so we'll see how the sound is. We will get the camera more secure later. And we also have our new camera, if anybody can see me here, uh, that's getting a nice view of the table. Uh, but anyway, I've opened the package up. And wow. <laughs> We have a, not a tightly woven uh, gambeson style material, uh, but a coarsely woven sack made out of, looks like burlap, maybe linen uh, cloth. Very nice touch, uh, you all tip. Let's see, the first thing, yeah, <laughs> the first thing I'm going to pull out here, oh, we have a nice steel buckler. Uh, looks a lot like some of the 13th century depiction, depictions on where you see some of them actually look like they're all steel or uh, uh, metal construction. Uh, remember a lot of these early periods specifically and even later period were made out of wood around a metal boss and the reason why uh, is because it was much cheaper and also uh, we do know that uh, sometimes uh, blades would get stuck in the edging like they do in the old Viking shields, uh, the actual rimming if it's uh, rimmed with rawhide. Uh, but this is a really nice design. It looks like it's about 14 gauge. Uh, it's a medieval buckler. A lot of times, uh, later century, uh, you don't see a lot of large shields, not a lot of proof of medium or large size shields used uh, or carried about a lot, but you see bucklers. You'll see them in depictions with full armor. Uh, and uh, one of the famous treaties or manuals is uh, uh, I-33 or 133. I've called it I-33 and had people correct me, but it's also 133. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful buckler, could be used for anything. Uh, what I'll probably do for this is I'll probably take this out to some SCA combat because it being a 14 gauge can probably withstand some serious blows. It'd be like wearing a helmet. Well, we'll see if it dents up, how well it handles. Uh, beautiful little buckler be used for all sorts of techniques, specifically from that manual. Roland Vorzeka, I'd love to get his opinion on it, what he thinks. I'm sure he likes the more early period uh, uh, bucklers that are actually made of all wood, but steel construction was plausible. They did have it, especially much later century, around the 15th century and so on. People carried them, especially archers, as a backup shield. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, let us know if you want to see this first. Uh, I'd like to see us test this first and maybe do some techniques with it. Let's see what else I've got in here. But, oh, I'd like to thank everybody at Patreon out there for going by and subscri uh, giving us uh, monthly donations. It's helped us get the lapel mics. Uh, it's helped us uh, repair our camera when it went down. But we did have put a lot of our own funds. It also helped us get our new camera that you can see above. Oh, yeah, we also have a surprise camera uh, we will be doing in our, our next action video that should be quite entertaining. Uh, but just saying, if some people have a problem with... <laughs> yeah, but some people have a problem with Patreon right now because I know that they have been uh, censoring certain people, uh, is what I've heard, and people have been withdrawing uh, donations. I do have a subscribe star, and I'll put that down here at the bottom on the screen and a link down below if somebody wants to go there. It only has two of our newest videos out. Uh, we have a video testing the Japanese Tosei Gosoku armor from Iron Mountain Armory. I will use armor piercing weapons. 
So that should uh, be a quite sought after video. Hopefully most people will be inter interested in that. That's why we put it up on Patreon only thinking that, you know, uh, it's a good video, a lot of people might want to see that, and we actually continued with it and did the project and went with armor-piercing weapons from all centuries, even early periods, since uh, anywhere from the uh, uh, early uh, Greek hoplites to the Romans to the uh, Vikings on up, and we had some surprising results. Uh, let's just say the samurai bled through his arm. Oh. Uh, we also have a half sorting video that we added in because we didn't have time because that was an hour long and it has a uh, oh, yeah, basically a supplement because we have the nightly age with our long sword half sorting to pierce the uh, dole uh, and uh, we try out the Corsicue, the pole arm, one of the uh, signature pole arms later century that was actually of any pole arm of all of them that have a long spike that's a small uh, cross section that could pierce the actual dull. But anyway, let's see what we have here. Looks like we might be jumping a little bit early age, if I'm recognizing this properly, because I do look at the web page uh, frequently. We have the early medieval saxe. Uh, this is like uh, like during the early uh, ages where we first start seeing saxes, uh, was like during the migrational age and the uh, Germanic uh, tribes. Uh, we have a early looking sax. Nice triangular uh, broad back to it. Uh, it's a, it's a back edge, of course, like most of them were. It's got a, a uh, curved clip point, uh, and it looks like it's gonna hold one heck of an edge. I might touch it up a little bit. Let's see what the sheath looks like. It looks like it has an actual sheath made of leather. I don't know how easy that's gonna be able to unwrap here quickly, but we'll try. Ooh, and it's got the straps, so you can hang it on your belt traditionally, looks like. I would probably wrap this through and come back around and tie it to itself. The way you want it on your belt. Pretty, pretty nice. Very much like that. Uh, if anybody remembers when I tested the sax uh, from Medieval Shop, it performed very well. He has one that's more of a later century design with a little bit more, or it could be migrational age. That's when you see more of the metal fittings. Uh, but it worked, performed extremely well cutting rolled wet newspaper. I don't know if you all remember that one. Uh, so I know his blades, the sax knives, are very efficient. And well, we also tested the Dublin sax, which isn't, doesn't really have a true historical counterpart, nice but it performed very well on our analog ballistics gel heads. I think it's the only sax we've tested on a gel head so far. If you'd like to see this on a gel head or what kind of test you'd like to see done with this sax, uh, just let me know. Put that down below. And if you'd like to see this first or the actual buckler. Uh, I think he sent one other item because he heard that I was working on a project and uh, I have real Lindenwood planks. Uh, these are quarter inch planks and I have eight of them. So as you can see, this is two foot. I can't make the shield any bigger than two foot round. I could do a two foot oval, or I thought about doing an actual heater, much like uh, my good friend Roland Varzeka did recently, but using the Lindenwood, because everybody knows the Anglo-Saxons famous uh, uh, poems and so on bring about uh, calling uh, shields lins. They actually talk about calling the shield a lind after lindenwood. Or uh, this is basswood, which is basically lindenwood. Some people call it limewood, uh, which is kind of a misnomer. It's not from the lime tree. Uh, but I think it's gonna perform very good as a shield wood, just like we did with our pine. Uh, our famous shield here, our Goxted shield was white pine. And it has the center boss from medieval shop on it. Uh, and it performed extremely well. It's only four millimeters thick in the very center, which is even thinner than these planks we see here, and even thinner towards the edge. Still lightweight enough to use, uh, but I believe this is what a V-Skjold, or war shield, Skjoldier, a V-Skjolder, would be like, very much like this. And I believe this is much, much like what the Goxted shields would be like, uh, historically, if we had them intact. But we have something in here that he said he was sending me, yeah, let's see what I got. If I can get them out. They got a catch on everything. I believe so. It's because they have these little hook pieces at the end, and if you look at this, uh, these are shield bands. Now, uh, where you would like to see me use them on a shield, uh, I would like to see people's votes on that. Uh, uh, due to the uh, guillotine, Gulating or the Gulating uh, laws, uh, they stated that the shields, remember these would have been used for judicial dueling and not the same as a V scale. It's covered in both sides in rawhide. 
Uh, they talk about three iron bands on the back. We have never found a Viking Age shield that had three iron bands on the back. But I could do a shield without leather backing like we have on this one and use the iron bands on the back of the Skjoldir, or the shield, uh, and including the handle, going with the planking. The only problem I see here is I'm noticing uh, these are a hair longer than the actual two foot planks I've got. So yeah, they'd cover the entire length of the shield no matter what shape you all want me to do with it. Uh, and um, I planned on using leather back and front on these boards. So I may have to get some new shield boards. Uh, maybe go with some pine or something else because I'm going to be honest, basswood's quite expensive uh, that I wanted to use for that project. I was thinking about using it on there, but these are quite longer and I really don't want to modify them. Uh, but maybe we could, if you want, use these on the back of a shield without backing it with the rawhide and only back uh, cover the front with rawhide or maybe a cloth covering and see if these bands can actually make the shield withstand enough to make it viable uh, or see how a home gang shield might perform. Because I'm thinking that the law was probably for judicial dueling the iron bands and they probably weren't allowed to back the back of the shield with hide as well because that stabilizes the shield so well that I don't think you would uh, tear it up quickly and you probably wouldn't even need three shields. You always hear the three shield rule. Um, I don't think you would even need three shields. With a shield like this, this thing would last through the entire thing and it's quite heavy so it doesn't move as fast as you probably want standing in a 10 by 10 foot square mat as the rules uh, turned into. So anyway, uh, these are very nice. They're, I'd say about maybe 14 gauge as well, or a little thicker. A 14 gauge I'm assuming uh, and it looks like that you can put little nails completely through or rivets to uh, join all the uh, planking so let's give us an idea what you think we should do with these should we put them on the front of a shield like demonstrated at medieval shop or should we put these on the back of the shield like was described in the actual uh, law from the Gulatin law but anyway hope you all enjoy our little opening video uh, be sure and go by and help us on Patreon if you can to help reimburse us for our new equipment. Let us know what you think about our new equipment down below. If it's approved the video any with the extreme wind conditions, because it is really windy today, you can probably see the camera shaking slightly. Uh, and uh, let us know what you want to see first. You want to see the buckler, the later century buckler, uh, the early medieval sacks, early period sacks uh, tested, and what you want to see it tested on, and what you would like us to do with the... Uh, the iron bands, what you think would be the most uh, historical thing, although later century shields, some of them might have had iron banding on the front, very plausible. Uh, you don't see that in Viking Age shields. We don't even find any like that, truthfully. And uh, also, uh, when I get this out, I'll let you all know, I'm going to, uh, when I go to build this shield, I'm going to build it very similar to this one. I'm going to use the same clips from this one, and when I retilled it to make it thinner on how I did that, Plus, I will be able to shoot it in a much better manner using these planks too to do an instructional video so you'll be able to see how to build the shields yourself in exact replicas of this, this shield or the one I sent to uh, Yark's Brave. Be sure and go by and check that out too. Anyway, as always, uh, Farvel.